Good afternoon and welcome to the week ahead video with me, David Madden. Today's date is Thursday the 23rd of January 2020 and the time has just gone 12.15 GMT and I'm looking ahead to next week which is Monday the 27th or sort of Friday the 31st of January. So we're looking ahead to next week which is the last week in January and before we take a look at the big economic and corporate stories next week let's just take a look at what's been going on in financial markets this week. And because the theme of the last 24 hours has been uh, the health concerns out of China has impacted stocks both in Asia and also to an extent here in Europe. Uh, unfortunately, the death toll in relation to the coronavirus has increased, as has um, the number of confirmed infections. So with that, we've seen a downward pressure on, on stock markets in Asia and also here in Europe. And the essentially the kind of the belief is that uh, if, the, if this health crisis gets worse in China and indeed the wider world, we could see a slowdown in economic activity. There are already kind of parallels being drawn between this potential crisis and the, the SARS crisis of the early 90s. So taking a look at the FTSE 100 here, we can see that it achieved a multi-month high, the highest level it's seen since last summer, only last Friday. But since then, we've had a move to the downside. Uh, we've also seen a steady increase in negative momentum. So if you press on lower from here, we could be looking at targeting 7,500 or potentially this area here, 7,470. But keep in mind, the wider upper trend is still very much intact. Uh, so if the wider upper trend does continue, uh, we could see the market retesting the January highs and beyond that, we could be looking at heading, targeting 7,700. Over in Germany, uh, it was only yesterday the DAX managed to break above 13,600 and set a fresh all-time high. But since then, we have seen a move to the downside. Uh, if we do press on lower, continue to press on lower from here, we could be targeting this zone here, down around 13,360. Uh, but keep in mind, you know, the overall trend, is the wider trend, is still very much to the upside. Uh, so we could be looking at, you know, retesting the recent all-time highs, uh, if you go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting 13,700, 800, so on and so forth. US stock markets are in decent shape as well. Uh, it was only yesterday the S&P 500 racked up yet another all-time high. Um, we're expecting the S&P 500 to open a little, little softer today in around 3,320, there or thereabouts. Um, as long as you hold above 3,300 itself, it's likely, it's likely we're going to it's likely that the wider upper trend could continue. But even if it doesn't, even if it pulls back below that, uh, we could find the support coming to this coming to play from this zone here, down around 3,274. I'll also take a quick look at what's going on over in Japan. Like I said, the um, uh, the, the health fear crisis, or uh, the health fears in relation to China, has impacted stock markets in the Far East. So we can see here the Nikkei 225 has been pushing a bit lower the last few sessions. If continued to press lower, we could retest this blue line here, the fifth of the moving average, and that comes into play in around 23,605. It's only if you have a size of break below that, because then we'd be looking to, to retest, potentially retesting the early January lows. And but keep in mind, you know, the trend for the last few months has been very much to the upside. So if we press on higher from here. And we take off the recent highs, we could be looking at targeting uh, 24,474. Now, next week, as some of the big events that I got for next week, we have a, a interest rate decision from both the Bank of England and also the Federal Reserve. But it is also worth pointing out that I'm recording this video about half an hour out from uh, the European Central Bank interest rate decision. Uh, it, it, economists are widely expecting. Uh, interest rates to remain on hold. Uh, the ECB have a fairly difficult task ahead of them. Uh, they, they, they need to bump up inflation. Inflation is currently around 1.3% of the Eurozone. They'd like it up around 2%. But given that they seem to be fairly restricted in terms of the tools that they have at their disposal, at their disposal it seems going to be a difficult, a difficult task. We could hear um, the ECB uh, chief, Christine Lagarde, talk about a um, call for uh, fiscal stimulus. But that, that, that's only a possibility. Um, but you know, speaking of the kind of central bank's theme, 
Next week, we have the Bank of England. We also have the Federal Reserve. Now, the Bank of England is, is, is much likely to be uh, the more likely of the two. I'll talk about that in the context of the euro versus the British pound. Um, only a few days ago, uh, the financial markets were pricing in a 70% probability of the Bank of England cutting interest rates next week. That's now been dialed back to somewhere in the region of around 50%. So traders are less are, aren't as dovish as they once were in relation to the perception about what the Bank of England will do next. Uh, with that, we're seeing the strengthening and sterling, but we're also, we've also seen a steady decline in the last few days in euro sterling. So if we continue to press on lower in euro sterling, we could be looking at targeting 0.84, and a break below that could take us back down towards um, 0.82.76. A bounce back could take us up, could run into resistance from this zone here at zero spot 86. As I mentioned, we also have the, the Fed Reserve uh, making their interest rate decision next week as well. To be honest, I think it's going to be uh, not, not an overly exciting uh, update. Um, the, the Fed Reserve seem to be fairly content to keep policy as is, but nonetheless, if we have both the Bank of England and the Fed Reserve um, having interest rate decision, it's quite likely, uh, it's, it's worth the while taking a look at what's going on in the pound versus the US dollar. So the wider uh, cable tr um, trend on, wider trend for cable the last few months has been very much to the upside. And while we hold above this blue line here, the 50 moving average, it's likely we could see further gains be made. Uh, we, could be, we could look at retesting the highs of late December. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting the 1 spot 35 zone. If we do have a decent move back below the 50 moving average, support might be found from this zone here, down around at 1 spot 29. Um, also next week, we have a other few bits and pieces that I got for. It's a fairly busy week. We have fourth quarter US GDP, Eurozone uh, flash CPI, like I said, uh, whatever the ECB see it later on today, that, um, this, this, the Eurozone CPI flash reading could be of importance. We also have the uh, UK CPI retail sales report. Uh, we also have the German IFO. We have third quarter numbers from BT Group. We have full year figures from Royal Dutch Shell. Now, uh, the oil market has been, on, the underlying oil market has been under pressure itself uh, in the past couple of days. Uh, obviously, that there are kind of fears about global growth in relation to the, the, the health situation in China, but also there are fears in relation to all potential oversupply. Uh, in relation to oil and with that we've seen downward pressure on the, the share price of Royal Dutch Shell. So the big picture view for the trend has been to the downside. While we hold below the 50 day moving average here, uh, we, this blue line here, it's likely we could see further losses uh, on the share price and we could even look at retesting the lows that we saw in December. We really need to take out this zone here, this zone here in around 23.30, there thereabouts. Uh, in order to kind of shake off um, the, the recent negative trend that it's been in. It's a busy week for earnings. Uh, we've got second quarter figures from Microsoft, and we also have first quarter figures from Apple. Now, Apple has been one of those tech stocks that has just been absolutely cleaning up recently. If you take a look at the, at the, uh, the share price, we can see here that the market has just been, this has been one of the kind of, when you hear about, say, the, NAS, the NASDAQ 100 and the likes setting all-time highs, and the S&P 500 ratcheting up all-time highs. This is what this is. You know, this is an indication of how bullish um, the kind of sentiment is. It's just going up uh, in a 40, almost almost, like a, almost a 45 degree line. So the upper trend is still very much in play. Um, you know, you know we're not, the next level to keep an eye for to the upside will be around um, this zone here in around $320 per share. If we do see any pullbacks, this zone here in around 310. Potentially 300. This kind of zone might act as might act as support. Even if it doesn't, we could be looking at heading back towards the early January lows in around 292 bucks a share. Uh, we all speaking of phenomenal upward upward trends. Uh, Tesla. Tesla have fourth quarter figures which are due out next week. I take a look at te Tesla's share price now. Very similar situation. Whereby, in fact, it's, it's actually the taken off at even a much more aggressive rate. The share price has performed phenomenally uh, very recently. What I will say about this is that the upper trend is still clearly intact, but I'm just a bit concerned about the, this candle here. The long wick in this candle, to me, 
you know, that, that, that tells me that's a bit of indecision. Now, that indecision could just mean a pullback of, you know, 5 or $10. It could mean a wider correction. But the upper trend is still very much in play for Tesla. But if you do have a bit of a pullback, support can be found in around the kind of 520, 500 itself. It's a big psychological number, or even down toward this price here, um, in around $492 per share. So we could see a bit of a correction in Tesla. You know, it's unusual for a stock to have a phenomenal run for such a long time and not have a decent pullback. But it's just something, you know, but let's not forget the wider upper trend is still very much in play. Now, thank you for, for listening. Have a good week trading and please tune in next week. Thank you very much.